Okay, so it's not it's not good enough that we have you um, you know create these long extravagant passwords. Um, um, but now I want you to make it. Those some special characters. Throw in some numbers. This is really great. No, it's not. Where am I going to find special characters in the past? At the end. Where am I going to find the numbers? At the end. What letters are capitalized? The first two. You think the hackers will ever do that? Now we're going to do right? I mean, humans are creatures of habit and habit in particular. We just have to involve our behaviors, habits, as opposed to patterns, but that's what they are. Okay, so now I've got you picking words you've never used before. I've got you mangling them, and oh, by the way, I'd like you to remember it five seconds after you change it. Okay, this is the Help Desk Employment Act. Okay, this does not get anything done. Okay, and oh, by the way, yes, we will fire you if you write it down. This isn't working, okay? Um, that leads into the stuff that you see here, as I warned you, because the whole premise of this is users are part of our defense, and they should be, okay? Because they're the leading edge. Their primary target half of our applications is the users who are the, uh, are the targets of our of, uh, attacks. So how do we get them to, well, play along? And we've all had our experiences with you. We'll, we'll go through this. Um, we'll, we'll run into this stuff as we go forward. Um, but then the other word that I hate is IA awareness. Just awareness in general. Awareness is the most useless word I can think of. Because it's so passive. I make you aware of something. That's really great. If I don't tell you what to do about it, if I don't help you do what's correct about it, it's worthless. I made you aware. It's raining outside. If I don't give you a rent code, this is not really useful information for you. Especially when I say I want you to go from here to there and not get wet. This is what we're asking our users to do. I want you to work on the network and not do anything that's going to compromise my network. Except make really big passwords that you'll never remember without writing them down. Make sense? Listen to the user. Uh, one other thing that kind of triggered this is actually it's kind of cool that, uh, that Mr. Bailey came uh, and did our keynote today. Because when I saw this book, I was like, this is so cool. We're taking intrusion detection and we're flipping it well, on the side. Right? We're taking the whole uh, paradigm of watching the gate, seeing the barbarians beating upon it which is what most people's concept of, of network security is. Almost everything they talk about is always at the perimeter. It's like, well, what happens if they already got in? And it's the whole premise that you've read this book, I encourage you to get this one as well as it's new one. Um, where it's just, hey, look at the behavior of your systems right now. And see if they don't tell you that they have been compromised. Watch what behavior that's already occurring. So it's taking this, that concept of intrusion detection and that, that process in IA is kind of you know, turned paradigm on its side and said, hey, let's look at this a little differently. Yeah, I thought the same thing about, well, how do we get our users to play along with us as we try and secure the network? So we'll take a look at what we're trying to accomplish. Um, the first point of attack, the current state of the user, current state of training, and at least my idea of some solutions. You may have your own. Um, I certainly encourage them. Um, we said, let's you know, train some emails, let's try and, and get some uh, some other training, some other presentations put together to help address these issues that I just kind of see them hanging out there, not really getting anything done. Um, so, what are we trying to accomplish? Well, that's simple, right? We want a more secure network. That was easy. Thank you for coming. I got something free to give away. Yeah. So, how are we going to get this done? Okay. Well, the problem is that. You know, our users, it's, well, it's one of two things, right? either our users or our web apps, that's what they're attacking. If, they're, if we don't have a web presence, well, we still have a company that's, that's addressing information. So we're on the web server, some other company, you know, we're hosting it with one and one. So there's no direct end to my network. So I'm not stacking it over here. So what's the next point? Where are they coming next? Well, they're coming after your users, right? This, uh, social engineer, this official, that's, you know, uh, 
send some spam. Let's get them to do something stupid. Because that's incredibly hard to do. Um, so, you know, well, do we depend on technology or users or accounts? Well, we know that most of us depend on what? Technology. Everybody does, right? You can't trust the users. I mean, has anybody here worked at a help desk before? Have, who has actually had the joy of actually having a user look you in the eye and telling you that their machine worked fine until you changed the mouse? <laughs> Am I, am I lying? Yeah. Okay, so this automatically puts us into a point of view where we're like, these people are idiots. Okay. These are people who the IP yeah, yeah. that was created. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. okay. yeah. But see, how does that make you behave with them? Because now you've got the one user who is always, always, always. They know just enough to spout terminology at you. And they can hit you with the acronyms. And they're always just like one or two steps away from what they are. So that's right? So they think they know something, but it kind of takes you to explain that to them. They're like, oh, yeah, they're, they're telling you how you were right the whole time. You're telling them how they were wrong. Okay? This is what you're up against. But you can't let that change your demeanor towards them as they come as a person. And there's a point that, that I was going to make that I don't think uh, made it uh, as a bullet on one of these slides. It's something we're talking about in between uh, some of these courses or some of the talks. Is that when you've got that IA IT separation, which is you know, kind of slowly happening now, which is a good thing. But who's our first responder? Who's the first responder when the user thinks something has happened to their machine? That's IT. So now, you know, it gets down to a point where are they going to call the help desk if there's something a little squirrely on their machine? But every time we go up and talk to them, we're basically in perms. Google in perms and watch <laughs> videos. You'll enjoy them greatly. Okay? This is what we can't be. This is what can't let our IT be. Because that's going to make that user not call. They, they're the first ones that, the way I always liken this is, if you've ever driven your car, and all of a sudden you hear a new noise, and it is so faint, so slight, everybody else thinks you are nuts. When you tell them, don't listen to some weird noise going on, you <coughs> down to the mechanic, and he's like, I've got no idea what you're talking about. But you know it. Why? Because it's yours. You've been in it all day long. Or, you know, uh, enough time to you can do anything, you know it. That's your user's machine and your user. They know what your system looks like. Now, we can expect, we can expect, you know, uh, responses that that are, uh, you know, new icon shows up. Yeah, we're going to call. Okay, new um, directory or something shows up. They're going to call. It's pretty much standard. They at least know to do that. It's when something is just a little off. It's not as fast as it was. It's not as responsive as it was. When I would double click this icon, it would immediately pop up, and now it takes a couple seconds to pop up. Is that important to you? It almost sounds silly, doesn't it? It sounds like, oh, there we go again. This sounds absolutely silly to any IT person whose only focus has ever been IT. It is silly to them. There's an IA person that makes me go, just go take a look. Okay, because you don't know. And you don't know until you take a look. They know their system. But now that's the kind of stuff they're not going to call for. That's this You're the mechanic at that point, or the IT person's the mechanic. Well, you're not. Separated out, 
IA gets to respond to stuff after a 19 defense is happening. Okay, and this type of incident is almost like a, a forensic uh, response at that point, because it could have happened six months ago, six weeks ago. Okay, whereas that first responder, they didn't get up and go look just because the user called and said, hey, something is just strange with my machine. No new icons, no new, you know, nothing new visually that showed up. It's just not acting the same as it was before. That's enough to get an IA person interested enough to go take a look pretty quick. The 19 person, that's just the user. So, you know, for the, for the user, right now, you know, their current state is confused, where, well, they don't know what, what First, uh, as you know, as a CISP, I think it's in the bylaws of IC Square that you cannot get a presentation without mentioning the word policy at least once. So here we go. Um, you've got to have policies that your users know that they're there. And how are they going? Because um, when I worked at the sheriff's office, um, I never got to a point where it was made into writing before I left. But because it was so small, I could actually talk to each person individually and say, listen, at no time will the help desk ever call you and say, let me have your password. At no point will uh, anybody at the help desk ever have <coughs> interact with you on the phone for your password. Just trying to deal with you know, that one avenue of, of social engineering. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff when we talk about creation of policies, it's not just oriented at the user because a lot of times what I see in, in so many policies is it's always, you will comply or else. Okay? And that's going to turn the user off from wanting to call in the first place. Did I do something wrong? Okay, am I, am I going to paddle on myself? Please don't snap my hand or worse. Because in most of those policies, what's that last line say? It may result in termination. What's that? Is that going to make that user want to call you up? That kind of goes down to, you know, they're scared. Okay, one of the things that um, I saw a long time ago was uh, this company I was working for going through this management transition. They brought in uh, this consulting company trying to push in a cold quality management, you know, I think that's what it is, uh, Edwards Deming. Uh, had like these 13 points. One of those points was drive out fear. And I always thought, how do you make this happen? And until I really started looking at this again, I was like, oh, wow, that makes kind of sense. Doesn't it? I don't want them so scared that they would not call me, in this instance, right, for, for our IA and for protecting our network. I don't want my users so scared to call me because they're like, well, did I go out to a, a, a website? Should we do it? That I do something, that I something that I shouldn't have, and we've got acceptable user policies to address what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. But you know what? You, you know how users are going to push the envelope. So now that they go out to a server, maybe it's not going to be covered in the AV not blocking. Or even if you are blocking, well, maybe this one slipped by the foot of it. They just get scared to didn't even talk to you. And you've done this before, people, again, as a help desk technician, you walk up to them and say, well, what were you doing? Nothing. Yeah. What was handy? Right? Well, that's useful information. What were you doing just before this bad stuff happened? Nothing. <laughs> Did you go out to new websites? Well, I may have had Internet Explorer open. And then what website? Well, you know, uh, this is what you, you know, this is what you go to. They're scared to tell you what they were doing. We're just going to help you with the rest of the problem. And now again, you've got this, this conflict between the user and whoever the first responder is against IT. And so these are typically folks who are fresh in, right? They're young people. They don't have a lot of uh, technical experience themselves, or if they do, it's, it's way more than they absolutely need, so they've got that, uh, that chip on their shoulder, that arrogance that goes along with, you know, basically being picked on, um, so they're the one, you know, saying that they're, they show up in one or two ways. They're either exactly you know, this wishy-washy or they're overly, overly aggressive with their 
My brain is so big, so full of IT information, how could you possibly understand and track everything you say? They, they go make burns on it. You're not making that user be more comfortable. You're not making them more comfortable. Yeah. Okay. And this is what, you know, this is that conflict that's got to get resolved. Because they're that first point. If the machine is compromising, well, like I said, if they can't get through, if Mark can't get it through the web, if they can't get through, you know, the red team can't come in through the, uh, through the portals of the internet, they're going to go to the user. That's the next logical target. Right? And it's so much easier. Let's drop thumb drives in the parking lot. Let's send emails. So let's just have them come out to a website. This is so easy. And it works. So if they've done that, I don't want them to be afraid to tell me, hey, you know, it's not true. Okay, now, friends, if you go to the same website two or three times, we're going to have to have a talk with HR. Okay, but if you make that mistake once, you gotta give them that break, and you gotta let them know that break. So they're confused. Um, we either don't have a policy, or again, they don't know that it exists. Um, they are frustrated because, well, they're not sure what to do, and you know, kind of going down to the irritated leaves that are frustrated. This is like one big ball of, uh, of well, negative emotion that they feel whenever something is happening, and they've got to interact with it. Uh, call this person again to come up and talk to us like we're little children as they try to fix our machine. So, uh, you know, we've kind of gone through the help desk. And you do end up with these typically different uh, <coughs> attitudes that show up. Once in a while, the person really cares. And, you know, those are some people you really want to hold on to as far as that, that uh, help desk person responding. I don't see them that often. You just don't. And then the other one would be, uh, um, so the way that we can get some buy-in here from the user is to actually train them and train the IT help desk. It's going to be another solution that we need to come up with. But for the user, right now, when we sit them down and say, okay, here is the, uh, the solution to our problem. The you know, passwords are being compromised or you know, whatever issues we have arising out there. When we have them come sit into a, into a um, like this, and we start talking to them like they're IT people, like they're technicians. I was watching on YouTube this one, uh, just because I don't get a feel for, for what other folks are doing for IA learners. And this guy is talking about, well, you know, sending out this email, and, well, it, 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 it executes this code, which compromises this. It's like listening to one guy talk, which is fantastic if you're an IT guy. If you're just Joe average user, good luck. Because Mark usually starts out about six feet deep and then jumps off the deep. Did you, did you follow us on the top there? We need to do all the DLLs and all that other stuff. Um, but I mean, this is how this is. You know, your users they, they don't care. To them. Hacking is, you know, Merlin working is, is helping you. Well, I've got a back door. What's that? Well, that's access to your machine. Okay. That's, that's what happens. And it's because, you know, there's this, this, this disconnect. And this guy, was, it was a great talk. I sat there and I watched the whole thing on YouTube. And I'm like, this is great stuff for an IT guy. Because it really was good. It was the current, basically, it was like the current state of, of the hack. Right? Here's all the new stuff that's going on. Here's the, you know, the perpetrators. Here's what they're attacking and what, you know, what information they may have stolen. You think you're usually doesn't care about that at all? You don't know that. Unless we're in an IA or an IT company, it doesn't even make sense to them. Now, so we know that it's technical. Or too technical, too detailed as far as you know, the exact process of what's going on. They don't care about this stuff. But the big thing is this user state. They don't have it. To them, this is a job. That computer is just a piece of equipment. You think they got buy in? You sit there and say, well, the company can lose a little bit. Well, that's the company, that's not me. Their point of view. 
right? They don't care about it. You know, as far as they're concerned, they're overworked and unpaid, regardless of if they've got four day work weeks and they're only working eight hours, get paid for 40. Okay, and they're making forty dollars an hour. Sign me up for that. Okay. But to them, hey, I'm overworked and I'm underpaid, regardless. It's always that, you know, that that uh, that aspect of we just got Joe Ever Jr. sitting in there. So they're already kind of in that point of view where it's well it's me against them. Because well, you know, the part is cover benefits. They're gonna cover our pay. But we didn't get a big enough pay raise last time. Yeah. Now they're not quite disgruntled. We'll call them semi grumble Okay, so they're not quite disgruntled yet. But they're not unhappy, they're just invisible. Okay, so what we have to do really is to start orienting this training towards them as an individual, not what the company needs, but literally let's just turn around, let's turn this thing on its side a little bit and say, well, because our ADP says that you can go out and serve websites, and because your, our ADP says you can exchange emails, you know, using the company email server, well, do you have any personal emails? Any personal information? Well, here, watch what happens if somebody attacks and they get on your machine, then they can look at your user information. They can look at your personal information that might have been in those emails or in the documents that you might have been working on in your computer. Because we actually do that right now, you said you can. Now, all of a sudden, you're a potential victim for identity theft. Number one issue out there on the internet these days. Now, all of a sudden, they care. Not because it's going to hurt the company. It will, obviously, because they just attack the company from you. But they care because now it's, they got a personal stake in you. So, as I said, our solution is to, in my opinion, look at this training towards the individual. And I really think that BYOD can open up some huge avenues here. Because they're taking that bad boy home. Right? They're taking it to the house, they're interacting with stuff there. Hey, you know what? If you get compromised on the inside, guess what happens when you take that thing home? Especially with that. Because now, this is given that you've got personal information on it. Now, all of a sudden, hey, you know what? If they act against the company, you're going to lose your own thing. You're going to lose your or whatever other information, your identity, of all things. So this is how we can you know, kind of turn that training on its side. Obviously, we want to talk about it from a company perspective. But if we don't give the user a stake, and like I said right now, then that's the job. That's their stake is every two weeks I get a paycheck and I have or at least not unhappy. <laughs> Training our help desk. How to interact with difficult people. Okay, difficult is everything from the person who knows absolutely everything except well, most things. Okay. To the person who just can't figure out where the inquiry key Because you got them. But I mean we're used to, to computers these days. We've got you know, the younger workforce. We still got a workforce in place that, you know, they were around before Al Gore got the internet. So to them, a great deal of the computers and stuff is still, you know, something where uh, I remember when I worked here at Augusta State, <clears throat> when it was Augusta College as a student assistant, taking these these uh, whopping uh, 386 computers because they were new ones. Um, about this big, go to the nursing school to set them up for the professors over there, knowing they would never touch them. Because they didn't have any use or need, and quite honestly, they didn't want to learn how. So you're going to deal with your IT people on. They have to be trying to basically customer service, not just to be technically oriented and able to solve problems. Of course, it ain't never going to happen, right? They only cost some money. You know, been nice. Um, and of course, clear, well-defined policies um, where we can actually get to a point where we're not going to say we're going to fire you if you don't adhere to these uh, policies, uh, but we're going to talk about the benefits of compliance. And we can also let them be aware of, like that policy I told you about, 
um, at the sheriff's office where no one will ever call you. There was an IT type of policy, but the users need to be, you know, told, hey, look, help us will never ever call you for your password, ever. If somebody does that, you know, hang up the phone, do whatever, unless somebody knows. Okay, so it, it, it's trying to address that, that one little aspect of social engineering. Okay, but it's, again, trying to get that buy-in from, uh, from the users so that they feel like they're a part of the solution, because they are, okay? Um, so, in conclusion, uh, we already have our human shields, they're our users. Their machines are going to be the ones that are compromised. Again, we can't get into the web apps, we can't get into anything else. The next step is the user. Okay? So they're going to be that first person. We need them to be unafraid to talk to IT. We just have to you know, get used to that fact. Um, leveraging that familiarity with their own systems. They know what normal is for them. You don't. Okay, I, I don't know how many places don't even have a baseline uh, on the average install for their, uh, all their systems, let alone what that individual user is dealing with. So when they call you up and say, hey, my system's acting funky, you're going to go sit down and start, you know, running your PS tools and looking at the processes and memory usage and everything else. And what's normal to me? Because you don't know what, you don't know what normal looks like. So abnormal, you don't have any idea what that's going to be. The user is going to look at that and know it's not responding. It's not the same as it was. Not obvious, right? No, no like I said, no new, like my background doesn't change on my screen or anything, but it's, it's something that's not working. So we want them to be a part of the solution to help us create a more secure network. Questions? Go ahead. Sure. I wanted to say favorite, but I don't know if that's a good term. What's your preferred method for reaching a large number of users or you know a large user population to to get them more knowledgeable? Help them be more knowledgeable and, and the kinds of things that they should look for. Some of them don't even know. I mean, they can't even tell you if, if their their system is is active. That's to me. That's people people contact. Um, your help desk personnel. Uh, in my opinion, if you're not working on a trouble ticket, you should be out just mingling, just out interacting with people, interacting with with all the, with the staff that's there. Not just the hot chip on the third floor, but with all the users, because that's how this, this conversation is. Why are all of us going to have time to do anything that is fun? I mean, so it's, it's up to us to Well, are you not going to call the credit card company? 